Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're back again here in New York City, uh, near Broadway. And I have so many things I want to tell you, it's kind of ridiculous. But I've been advised to try to focus on only a few subjects today. But I do have to mention a few little points on the side. Sometimes it's very noisy here in New York City. We have sirens, or garbage trucks, or the radiator uh, makes noise, or somebody upstairs is doing martial arts or dancing. So. Uh, certain buildings uh, were used to hearing noise, and that's the way it goes. Now, I was told that some of, the, some of our little uh, interviews together, our, our, our little video shows, uh, get terminated very abruptly because there's a siren coming up the street or whatever. So I'll get to the points in a moment, but I just wanted to mention that uh, normally I'm used to speaking to an audience or performing for an audience, so it's little, it was a little bit hard for me to focus or to feel inspired. But what I feel good about today in particular is that you're going to see how we develop the show. And eventually we're going to get lights, and we're going to get makeup, and I'm going to have a hairstylist. And nobody told me that last week I looked like a goat, so I cut a little bit my goat, or they call it a goatee or goat tea, I don't know. Anyway, uh, basically you're going to see the production gets better and better. And oh yeah, I wanted to mention I have my fancy shoes on today. These are my concert shoes. I've worn them all over the world someday when I'm very, very famous, or at least when I'm dead, they'll be valuable, maybe worth at least $15. But they have gone to China with me, and Russia, and Italy, and all over America, and I've traveled to many other countries too, and uh, Korea, and Japan, and Germany, and France. So uh, I'm happy to wear my fancy production concert shoes today. But anyway, getting to the point, um, I have received a, a question from one of our viewers and listeners and asked me how to make the etudes sound better, like the Kreutzer etudes, how do you make something sound musical, how do you play musically? Well, obviously it's very important to play in tune, always working on intonation. Now, I would say in the beginning of your practice you should always do scales very slowly, and we'll talk about scales some other time, and I'll show you the routine uh, that, that, that I've learned, and I'll explain to you the background of those routines, of those scales. But, in regard to the etudes and playing musically, we have many choices. First of all, the etude shows many times a certain kind of a technical focus. It's whether it's trills, or octaves, or thirds, or scales, or bow crossings, changing the bows. So, the first uh, aspect of your work should be slowly and carefully to make sure you're playing in tune in a proper bow stroke. Uh, that's another subject we should talk about, is the fluid bow stroke, a little bit of wrist action to keep the hands a little bit flexible is important. Um, but then adding uh, the musical aspect of something usually comes a little vibrato, or connecting the phrases harmonically, things uh, give you a certain indication. So I'm going to imitate um, a little bit this of this subject, and then we'll get down to a little bit of um, my history and, and some other subjects. But also, just in the beginning, of course, I feel a little funny because I'm not exactly so famous or accomplished, certainly not world famous, but so I feel a little strange uh, it was such an egocentric show, but at least I can do the show myself without paying anybody, and I can uh, um, sort of explain my history, how I evolved into this musician of this, of this level, whether you're higher or lower than this level, at least you'll see how I got to this point to this day. And in other words, a violin is over 30 years old, let's put it that way. Okay, now, the, uh, what? Oh, just kidding. Okay, um, um, I'll show you next year, let's say Kreutzer uh, number two, for starters. First of all, it goes like this. So forth. So at the moment, I'm using this fingering. Then three, four, which is an E, which is the E. I have to make sure that that's in tune. I keep my wrist back, and I'm trying to play in tune. Make sure my C natural is low enough. And I should I should start slower when I first begin. No vibrato. And 
and my fingers should not be up in the air flying around, they should all be pretty close to the string. But anyway, eventually we get a little faster, and I want to emphasize a little bit of the harmonic structure of this. And I'm playing for memory, and I haven't played this particular etude in many years, so I might miss a few notes here or there, but I'm going to give you the general idea. Yeah, one more thing. The up bow should be equal as the down bow. It shouldn't be... But the up bow... The up bow, we're going up towards the ceiling or the sky. That's the up bow. This is the down bow going towards the floor. They should be equal. Down, up, down, up, down. It should be very equal. No accents. sloppy, I got faster and faster, but you heard how the, how the piece of music began to go up the hill and down the hill, you know, sort of ascending and descending harmonic structures, and so I got a little louder or a little softer in some places, and that makes it a, a little more musical. And another example, I think it's number eight or number nine, it goes like this. string crossing. It really moves around. So, if you like, I'll work on it a little bit and play it in the future, maybe in a week or two. I'll work on it slowly, more carefully, and then you'll see how I'll have more control of it. So, um, I apologize for part of that being certainly sloppy, most of it was sloppy, but again, the way to improve that would be to slow it down very carefully, play it in tune like this. one has to practice, but has to practice intelligently. I was always told as a kid over and over and over, it's more important to practice intelligently, listening for intonation, checking your bow stroke, checking your, your position. Um, more important to do that even for a half an hour than to spend three or four or five hours sloppy. So understand, maybe some of your parents should understand also when you tell your kids to practice and they practice only by the clock. And you say, do one hour. It shouldn't be just one hour while they're, you know, thinking. They should 
they should be concentrating. Make sure they're concentrating, playing in tune, and following the teacher's instructions. Otherwise, they're actually practicing hours and hours of bad habits. And if they're practicing with the elbow down here, or the elbow's too high, they're ruining themselves. So, um, unfortunately, private instruction from a good violinist is important. It's not cheap. The other day I had to tell someone who's interested in studying that not only do you most likely have to acquire a violin, which may cost anywhere from $500 to some thousands of dollars, you have to pay a teacher very likely once a week for a lesson. And teachers charge anywhere from 50 bucks to 150 bucks or more per lesson. And each lesson is roughly an hour or maybe a little over an hour. But depending on the teacher, but like I say, sometimes you don't need a new violin or an expensive violin. You need maybe a new teacher, or at least you need uh, to practice better, practice more intelligently. And I can tell when a student has practiced intelligently, because if they come back to a lesson and they sound just as bad as they did the previous week, having the same position problems or intonation problems, then I know they haven't practiced properly. And at that point, I have to find out why are they not motivated? Are the parents pushing them to play music and they don't want to play? Uh, in that case, it's a tough situation, but I didn't want to practice, and my parents might have let me quit, because I probably wanted to quit at some point. But I'm very, very glad they didn't let me quit, because now I can play much better, and I have a certain social life, and I can travel the world making music with the universal language of music. And so my life is so much more uh, exciting and enriched by the music, the language of music that I speak. And so I would say, without brutalizing the child, make sure they do practice uh, one way or the other properly and you know, nicely. Try to make it a nice experience. Explain to them what the future is, or play them some music on a, on the computer, or on a, on a record, or a CD, or whatever you have, so they can hear where they're headed. What kind of music will they play in the future? Here comes another siren, but that's okay. We're not going to panic. So I'll, I'll just I'll slow down for a second. Um, I do think, real quick, if you do take a, a child to a concert, hopefully not a boring concert, uh, let them stay only till intermission or, or arrive only at intermission, uh, hopefully they won't get too bored, but let them hear the violin or the instrument they're studying, they might feel motivated, because at first playing scales and etudes is not much fun. 